Welcome back to my channel at Marie Nicole Designs and I'm sharing another fun video today and I am featuring this. If you have not used the mint tape from scrapbook.com yet, you are missing out because this is a really fantastic tool to have in your craft room. Not only does it come in a standard tape size, like so but it also comes in a roll of four inches now why would you need tape to be this wide i'm gonna show you all right friends like i mentioned there is this four inch wide tape roll from scrapbook.com and you can see how much wider it is than the standard size now if you haven't used this tape already it's really like a post-it note it's kind of a paper material and the back is tacky. I wouldn't say it's super sticky so you can apply it to your surfaces and it easily tears off. You can put it on your paper to hold your dies down or do some masking and it easily peels off. You don't have to um, worry about it ripping up your paper. So this is a great tool to have in your craft room for die cutting, stamping, um, masking off areas and ink blending and I'm going to show you how to use this four inch roll with some of your stamps to create a masked one layer card. So I'm going to be using this mint tape from scrapbook.com and I'm also using this Altenew Shrub Rose set. This is a really pretty um, layering set, but I'm not going to use all of the layering pieces today. I'm going to do some stamping and coloring with just these little pieces. So let's get started and make a card. I'm going to start by grabbing one of these pre-cut card fronts and I get these from scrapbook.com. They're already pre-cut to an A2 size card card size, which is four and a quarter by five and a half. Um, so perfectly sized for you. Sure. So I'm going to start with this beautiful rose and um, I have an idea in my head how I want this all laid out. So I'm going to start by adding my rose down here on the bottom, picking that up with my door and going and stamping that out. So I'm going to stamp this out using some black hybrid ink today. I really like the black hybrid inks because hybrid inks take some of the guesswork out of what kind of ink you should be using. There are different inks, dye, uh, pigment, there's chalk inks, but the hybrid ink kind of works for any kind of coloring medium that you might want. So I go ahead and stamp out with the black and then whether I want to use watercolors or alcohol markers or anything, the black ink is going to work just fine for that. So I've got one of those stamped out. I'm going to set this aside and let this image dry a little bit. And now I'm going to take my four inch. I think it's four inch. I keep at, keep saying it's four inches, but let me check. Yes, that is definitely four inches. Okay, so I'm correct in my measurements. I'm just going to peel this little piece of tape off here. And then I'm going to tear or peel out some of this paper. Now, like I showed you that um, tape earlier, it's the same thing. It's just wider. So it being paper, you can go ahead and tear it, but I'm just going to use my scissors and get a nice clean edge and cut it. And I'm sticking it down inside of my Misty because I'm going to stamp on top of this and that's going to create a mask. Now, I also want to make masks for the um, leaves in this set. So while I have all of my um, tape stuck down in my Misty, I'm just going to go ahead and stamp all of these out at once and save myself a few extra steps. All right, so that is good enough for me. I'm going to peel this off my Misty. And I'm actually going to cut all of these images out. Now you can create a mask from your stamps that also have coordinating dies, but I sometimes prefer to hand cut or fussy cut my masks because 
the dies tend to leave just a little bit of a border around the lines. And when you add that over your stamped images, it adds a little bit of a border around if you want to ink blend or do some other things. Um, so if you fussy cut it, you can get right up to the edge of your stamped lines. All right, so I've got all of these masks um, cut out, fussy cut out. Got my flower here and my leaves, and they're like a post-it note. They are completely sticky on the back. So you can use these just as you would use some masking paper. So I'm going to go ahead and layer this over my stamped image. And I'm actually going to just start masking right now. So I've put it over here. So when we say a mask, this is what we mean. We're, we're masking or covering up our stamped image or an area that we don't want to get other mediums on top of when we continue creating our cards or art journals or whatever you like to do. So I'm masking this flower here so that I can stamp again on top of it and it's going to look like my next image is, is behind this flower. So that's another thing that you can keep in mind when you're masking is the first thing that you stamp and then you mask, that's going to be in the front. So you can stamp those first mask them off and then work on your background and this works a little bit better if you want to have a one layer card your flowers you want to look like are in the front and you want to ink blend on the background stamp your flowers first like i'm doing here mask them off and then do some ink blending so that's what we're going to do but i want to go ahead and get all of these flowers stamped out first. So I could just leave this mask where it is and cut out another mask and add it to that one. But just so I can kind of show you what this masking is doing, I'm going to peel this one up and you can see that I have my two flowers and it looks like this one is in front of that one because I masked off that area and when I stamped, it didn't get under here at all. It got on this paper. So that is just the basic idea of masking and there are so many fun techniques that you can do with masking. So I'm just going to stamp out a few flowers here and a few leaves, and then I'm going to make the background. So I'm going to grab some of my ink here. I'm actually going to grab this sunshine color from Pink Fresh Studios and add some yellow. And I'm going to use some grassy knoll green from Pink Fresh. And I want it to be darker around the edges and lighter. So I'm going to continue bringing this green in from the edges. Okay, so I've got some yellow. I've got some green. I want to come in with a darker color now. So I've got a light, a medium, and a dark color. I'm actually going to come in with Emerald City, which is like a bluish green. And I think that's going to look really pretty right around the edges. Okay, so I've got three ink colors applied here. You can see it going from dark to light. It almost looks like a glow on this side of the flowers. And it does look like a little bit of a hot mess right now because I've got my masks still on there. But once I peel them off, you're gonna see how crisp of an image they are and it's gonna look really fantastic. There's another thing I kinda wanna do and bring a little bit of color in on this side to make it look like there's just this glow right here. So I'm gonna start with my yellow again and bring in a little bit more color on this edge. Okay, so I have my stencil binder and I've got this full of stencils. I just uh, put my stencils in these page protectors here and then I can grab whatever I'm looking for, flip through them, and find the perfect stencil. And then I can go file them away on my shelf and have it all perfectly um, organized. And so I love this binder system for stencil organization. So I'm looking for a fun stencil. I wanna get a small pattern. So I'm looking for something some, with some really small openings here. And I think I'm really liking this one. So I'm going to grab this. This is the Little Boxes stencil from scrapbook.com. So I'm going to set this off to the side for now. And then you can go ahead and just 
add this right over. Um, now, a lot of times what I like to do is take my stencil, put my cardstock on it face down, and I like to tape from the back side. So I'm using some of my um, more narrow mint tape to tape it on the back side. And that way I can flip it over. I can ink blend the whole surface here and not worry about the tape being in the way, but it's gonna hold my stencil in place so I can go ahead and ink blend. Okay, so it's a little bit hard to see, but it's really gonna show up after I pull this stencil off. And you can see that background, that design now, right over that ink blended background. And if you carefully peel off your masks, you can add them back onto your stamp set. A lot of times I like to just stick it to the outside of the stamp uh, packaging and it's right there if you wanna use it again on another card or another project. Voila, there is my masked flowers. Now all you have to do is go ahead and color those in. So I'm gonna do that off camera. I won't bore you guys with any coloring and then I'll probably add a sentiment. Um, one thing I forgot to do is I wanted to add flakes of gold shimmer. So <laughs> I am gonna put the masks back on and that's totally fine. They're still sticky. I'm just gonna line them up, put them back on and I'm gonna do some gold splatters. Okay, so I've got this gold shimmer brush from Nuvo and I'm just gonna use the cap and I'm gonna splatter on lots of little gold splatters here and it's gonna make lots of gold shiny flecks on my background. Just really add to that enchanted feeling of my enchanted background. So I'm gonna get it over here where it's darker and I'm gonna kinda of leave that white area alone as much as possible and just get this on my background. And I'm gonna leave that as it is. You guys can't, can't really see it on the camera, I'm sure, but it is super sparkly now. So now I'm gonna peel off my masks again for the final time. And that just looks so cool. And it's a great way to add so many things like stenciling, ink blending, stamping, all on your card, but leaving it a one layer card. I'm not using any foam adhesive. I'm not doing any die cuts or anything. This is all one layer on the front of your card. Ta-da! So like I said, I'm gonna go and finish this off camera. Um, once you get to this place on your card making, all you have to do is add a little sentiment and color in your flowers if you want to, or you can leave them plain. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching me do some masking with this mint tape from scrapbook.com. I hope I left you with a lot of ideas and inspiration on how to build a background over a masked image. Um, if you have any questions, leave them down below. Otherwise, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, tap that bell for notifications, and just do all the things. I'll catch you guys next time. Bye!